Welcome to Specific Love. Here recently I've purchased a bunch of these parts organizers so I can store away some of my fasteners and all the other odds and ends that I use over time. Unfortunately though, I've been just storing them on my floor, which becomes a trip hazard and I need to remove them. So for this video, I'm going to create a shelf system so I can store these away and yet still have easy access to whenever I need them. Let's begin. Now the first step was to take a lot of measurements of the parts organizer and then try and transfer it over to a real simple drawing in SketchUp. I'm also going to be trying to use as much scrap wood as possible because I don't like throwing wood away, plus I like to keep it really simple. The first step was to cut down some 2x4s for the corners to 25 and a half inches, and I needed four of these. I also touched up the edges to remove any burrs. Now for the top and bottom, I'm going to be using a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. And as you can see here, this has some factory paint on it, so this edge should be nice and straight, and we'll base everything off of that side. Using a carpenter square revealed that the previous cut was close enough to use for this build. I then measured a width of 20 inches and cut it with a circular saw by using a long level as a straight edge. I then trimmed that piece in the two at 13 and a half inches using the same cutting method. Next up is cutting all the little slots for the organizers to ride on and I'm going to use some 3 quarter inch plywood. Now I'm going to cut it here on my table saw using my table saw sled, a speed square, and a clamp. Let me show you how to do this. Now the first thing you need to do is take your measurement of the size you need to be cutting, then tape, take your speed square, make sure the large flat end is against your backing here. Measure it out exactly where you need it. Then take your clamp and clamp it in place. Now whenever you're adding a clamp in here to hold the speed square, there's a chance you might need some extra spacers to keep it steady. I'm just using some popsicle sticks. Now the reason why I chose a speed square here is when I'm lining this piece up and I go for this cut, this back here is going to be the right measurement, but also because this is a 90 degree speed square, right up here, this full length should be the same thickness all the way through. It's also a good idea to take another piece of wood and have downward pressure pushing down on the board so it's less likely for it to try and come up on you. And by using that technique, I now have 20 pieces to the right thickness. One thing to keep in mind when you're cutting plywood is to make sure you cut with the grain. I cut at a 90 degree angle on this piece and you can see here I got a bunch of breakout and jagged edges along the edge. Versus this piece here, which I cut with the grain and it's nice and flat and sharp. I now need to trim all these down to the right length. So I'm going to take that over to my miter saw, set up a stop block and chop them down quickly. Now to attach these 2x4s to the top and bottom, I'm going to be using pocket holes. Now we need to know where all these sliding positions go on these 2x4s. So we're going to take this carpenter square and I'm going to go along here and mark all the positions in which these need to be installed and then transfer those marks to the other three. Now I'm going to start attaching the legs to the top and to do that, to hold it in place, I'm using this 90 degree positioning square that I've clamped to one to the leg and one to the top. Now we're going to screw it in. Now that I have the top portion on, I'm thinking I probably need maybe a handle over here on the sides to give it a little more strength if I ever want to pick this up when it's fully loaded. So we're going to take a 2x4, we're going to measure this out, cut it in, screw it in place. Now once you have the frame all put together, it's a good idea to grab one of your organizers and your pre-cut runners and you want to measure everything up. In my case, I found out that they're probably a little bit more narrow than I wanted. So in this case, I'm going to use some jumbo craft sticks to space these out just a little bit more. Now the great thing about these are really cheap, you can buy them in a lot of craft stores and they're made out of a hardwood, usually birch. So not only are these going to be strong, but they're really narrow and you can adjust the thickness that you need in very small increments, glue them together, and you can have a real strong side rail. 
Now while we give some time for the glue to set up, I need to clear out a spot for this to go. Now I actually measured this up and designed this setup to fit right here under my mobile router table. Now, I built this in a previous video if you want to see how it did that. I'll put a link to that in the description below. So now I need to clear all this out and create a little platform for it to sit on. Now to make this a little bit more sturdy, I'm adding a couple 2 by 4s one over here on this side and one over here on that side. Now to do that, of course, this already has a floor to it, so it's raised it up and I can do a bunch of measurements and try and get this exact, or you can do it a quicker way. Now a quick and easy way to do this would just take a pencil and mark across this. But because of the curved edges from the factory on the 2 by 4 there's a good chance that you're going to dip below and get the mark too low. But here's a trick, if you take your finger, make sure the pencil is sharp, put your finger right on the top there, on this sloped area, it's going to level it out across the top of this board. And then, carefully just take your pencil, run across the top. Now that mark right there is now level with the top of this. Even with that curve there, it should still be perfectly level. Then I'm going to use the table saw to cut them down to size. Now to create the floor and base for this, I'm going to use this old piece of plywood. It's uh, about 3 8 inch thick, which should be plenty enough strength to hold that storage unit. Now that these runners have had some time to dry, let's try this out. Oh yeah, perfect fit. Now before I add the finishing touches, let me see if this will actually fit. Now looking at this a little bit closer, I've noticed that there's just a must be a little bit of a twist in this bottom board, but that's okay. Remember this is mostly scrap wood, and so I'm okay with that. To secure this in place though, I'm going to take one screw and just put it straight through this brace into this brace, and that should secure it in place where it's not going to move at all. Now for the back of this unit, I cut down another piece of, of scrap plywood that I had and put that in place. Not only will this give us a little bit more strength, it'll also be a nice backstop for all of the slots. Now to give this a touch of color, I've used some painter's tape and I masked off some areas. These vertical columns here, I'm going to give them a touch of a cherry color just to make everything pop. Now that this is tucked away under my router table, not only is it nice and tight and just easy to get to, but it's also just out of the way. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like button. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. I also have some other videos right over here, so make sure you check those out. Otherwise, have fun building.